Is Daniel Craig the worst dressed Bond ever? Well, let's face it, there are some contenders over the decades whose then trendy fashions have fallen by the wayside and left them holding the bag. But I don't think any other Bond actor has been so lambasted for his style during his tenure as Bond, rather than years later with the benefit of hindsight. So let's see if Daniel can redeem himself in his last movie, No Time to Die. And buckle up, as there are some very striking clothes to take a look at. And story-wise, we are in for a journey and a half. We start with a retired and in-love Bond. Not actually his first time, and of course we know it won't last. It is a Bond movie. But this time we get to see him actually having the time to relax and enjoy the possibility of a different life and the wardrobe that goes along with it. Oh hi. Welcome back to For the Love of Suits. And if you're new here, we find inspiration on how to look good from the best dressed men on the screen. His first outfit is a casual one, and it's a very nice Connolly Gambino jacket. It's a linen and cotton mix, relaxed fit jacket with drawstrings at the bottom which tells us that he's retired and enjoying life. I'm not a fan of the drawstrings that were in fashion a few years ago on pants and jackets. Are they still in fashion? But I think the fabric is fabulous with a very noticeable texture running through it. Beneath it he wears a white Henley t-shirt and a beige pair of pants. Perhaps it is just proximity of time, but I can't help feeling that Daniel Craig's casual wardrobe is one of the best. While visiting Vesper's grave we see his first suit of the movie and I like it. My tailor has long been trying to get me to wear corduroy and I resisted. It was all the rage when I was a young kid in the 70s and the bright colours were gaudy as hell so I have a bad association with corduroy. But recently I've come around as colours today are far more nuanced. I haven't bought anything yet but I can be easily persuaded. This is a light brown corduroy suit from Massimo Alba known as a sloop suit. The thickness of the corduroy gives the suit very soft edges. His wardrobe again echoing the relaxed off time despite the graveside setting. This is a good start to the movie as the fit of this suit is not too skinny. Though noted of course it's not from Tom Ford. The blue shirt beneath is quite strong but I always suggest that blue is the best companion for brown. The tie looks like his favourite grenadine tie and a nice pair of suede mock toe chucker boots from Drake's. Neat but casual and able to take on the dusty ground. And if you're enjoying this video so far please hit that like button. It helps bring this video to the attention of other men's enthusiasts. Thank you. Of course this also gives us a great chase sequence and probably the best motorbike stunt of any Bond movie. Let me know if you think there's a better one. The fabric is an unlined lightweight corduroy in a casual cut with a notch lapel and a ticket pocket on the front. The small pocket above the right hip pocket which is often used to break up the lines of a suit so it doesn't seem too plain or long on the front. Although I don't think this is a problem for Craig's physique. If you are interested there is a full review of the suit from Daniel Gaster over at From Tailors With Love. I'll put a link in the description below. I always wondered what kind of fabric corduroy was. It's a curious one. It's actually velvet with channels cut into it after manufacturing. That gives it that soft look without being too um, uh, velvety. So after the surprise breakup, Bond is back to being solo in Jamaica. A familiar location for Bond right from the beginning and back to very casual wear. And of course it won't be long until he's pulled back into MI6 but let's pretend for the moment that we don't know that and enjoy his professional flirting. Daniel has on his go-to colour combination for casual wear. A black shirt and light jeans or chinos. And it can't be faulted at this stage, it works. When you know what works, just go with it. His shirt is from Tommy Bahama and the grey chinos are from Tom Ford. Even when the materials are soft and relaxed, this colour combination keeps the outfit looking sharp. It's tux time. And there is a fabulous tux for Daniel's last black tie outing. They paid special attention to the design, but there were a few problems. The fabric, a special stretch silk wool blend that the designer, Suriat Anne Larlarb, wanted was made in Italy, but there was only a small quantity of it available. The tux was produced by Tom Ford. So they had to produce clean and stressed version of the tux, enough for Daniel Craig, his double and his stuntman. Okay, there wasn't enough material, there was a very special material with stretched fabric in it, and they say they could only produce 33 versions of the tuxedo. What do you think of the tux? A classic or just run of the mill? Judging by the action sequence, the stretch material was a great decision and clearly Tom Ford has loosened his tight fit since the last movie. All round I think this is a great Bond tuxedo. Bond is wearing a Rogue Territory waxed Ridgeline supply jacket that is the perfect canvas for his surroundings. He pairs it with a white t-shirt and some dark jeans. The jacket is well worn and rugged, a bit like himself at this stage. As he pulls the tarpaulin off the car to reveal a vintage Aston Martin, I feel it's a metaphor for Bond himself, his jacket is dusty and well worn but is also to be removed soon to reveal the vintage but shiny Bond back at MI6. Bond is back in a suit and a beautiful one at that and I'd argue one of any Bond's best. It's a beautiful Prince of Wales Czech two-piece suit designed by Tom Ford, Suriat, with some input from Daniel Craig himself. 
though it's a somewhat slim fit suit, I think it fits better than the previous movie suits, and it looks like the input from the others has kept Tom in line. It's a mid-grade check and a subtle fabric rich in character and high in quality. The Prince of Wales check is also often referred to as Glen check, however they are not the same. Technically the Prince of Wales has an over check on top of the Glen check, but each time I ask tailors about it I get different answers, so don't fret about the difference too much. I do think as Daniel Craig's last suit it refers back to a famous suit worn by none other than the original Bond, Sean Connery. He wore a three-piece grey Glencheck suit in Goldfinger, which is often referred to as the best suit of his term. So after the controversy of the last two movies, I can't help feeling that Daniel Craig has redeemed himself a little bit this time round. The suits are still made by Tom Ford, the suits are still on the slim side, but not quite as tight-fitting as before. In particular, I admire that Prince of Wales suit, but let me know what you think. Has Daniel Craig redeemed himself? So if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notifications button. I notice a lot of my guys are not getting notifications on my videos. Thank you for watching to the end, and I'll see you again in the next video.